Thank you. For the past uh, month or so, we've been talking about prayer. We've been learning about prayer. Hopefully, your prayer life has been strengthened or encouraged. Um, maybe just reminded of some things you already knew. And uh, today, we'll probably be kind of wrapping, wrapping up our, uh, our emphasis on prayer um, and a couple of other things that I, I was thinking about, um, and it probably will come back to me in a minute if it's important. But two weeks ago, I, uh, I brought a message on the shortest prayer in the Bible and, uh, and how effective that was. But I also made reference to the longest prayer in the Bible, and that is found in Nehemiah. Um, it's over 1,200 words, and it is where Israel is confessing their sin, and it took a while. Uh, and, uh, and so, but it, but it had a great impact when they did that, uh, they rebuilt the walls. They were able to do all this really incredible stuff because they had confessed their sins and they'd gotten, they'd gotten that out of the way and they could deal better with, uh, with the Lord. And uh, of course we know that that's, uh, uh, that's, that's pre, pre Christ, that's pre uh, the cross and, and, but it's still such a powerful, a powerful message for us. Um, so today, uh, we're kind of looking towards um, the 4th of July celebration and all that other stuff. But I thought today would be a great day for us to spend some time praying for our nation. And, uh, but first, I wanted to invite any of our young people who'd like to come up, to come on up. Come on, Jesse, you can. Raylan, you can. Hannah. Reagan. Jaden. Anybody, Herb, anybody who's young. Um, okay, so over there, everybody go grab you a flag. You have your own flag, you know, extra flags. So, um, so I have a question for you. Um, you don't have to participate. Or you can yell from back there. So I have some questions for you guys. How are you? Good, good, good. Hey, I've actually put your name, your birthday. Yeah, America. You're... you're that reminds me of what it is. Next week, baptism, we think, we're pretty sure. Okay. Eventually, sometime soon, Jesse right there waving the flag, we're going to get to baptize him. We're very excited about that. So that's good. Okay, so y'all, come on, come on over here. Everybody get on the stage and look at these beautiful people. They can see how beautiful you are. And uh, you did prepare something to say, didn't you? No, I'm just kidding. Come on up here. Come on up here and face them. So I have a couple of questions for you guys. You want to come up there with them? <laughs> here, boy. I like that. Uh, so um, they just got back from vacation, too, like Steve and Yoli. Um, thanks for inviting us. So um, I have a question for you guys. I want you and gals, I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to think about it before you answer, and then I'll go around, and one by one, I'll let you answer your, the question. Okay, you ready for the question? What is your favorite color? Okay, that's the question. So, what is your favorite color? Green. Why? I don't know. Yeah. What is, what's one of your favorite things to do with the color green, or what is your favorite thing that is green? I don't know. Trees, because okay. I like to climb them. Trees, you like to climb them. Trees, green. green. Excellent choice. Green is a favorite color. How many up out here, green is your favorite color? Okay, there's some other people. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, favorite color? Uh, I think blue. Blue? Yes. And what is your favorite blue thing? Well, shirts. Shirts. Oh, awesome, awesome. I love that. I love that. I love that. Cool, okay. Favorite color? Rose gold. Gold? Oh. Rose gold. Rose gold. <laughs> Pink gold peach. Good luck, Okay. So, uh, what is your favorite rose gold color thing? I don't know. You don't know. Okay. Well, that's okay. All right. Favorite color? Blue. Blue. And any favorite blue thing? Shirts. Skirts. She says no. Okay. No. No. Okay. Favorite color? Purple. Purple. Any favorite purple things? Everything is purple. Everything's purple. Okay, good. Awesome. Okay, so I have a question for you. I want you to turn around and look up here at the, at the screen. What if you could only have that one color, and I ask you to color this? 
what would happen if all you could do is the color that was your favorite color? Would you be able to do that whole thing? Yes, you just do it all purple. I, I, I got that. I get your message, Jesse. But, but so if you, were doing, if you were doing green, you would only be able to color in four or five states. If a rose gold, you may just, you know, maybe would let Michigan and Arkansas be rose gold or whatever. Blue, you could get a couple of, you know, but see, aren't you glad that whoever made that map used more than just your favorite color? Because it's, it's cool. Purple, yes, we get that. So favorite colors are important, but we also like to be able to use more than just our favorite color. Okay, you guys are great. Go, go sit down. And thank you for your flags. That was very good. You keep, keep that, yes. You guys can, uh, everyone can have a flag if you'd like to have a flag. So what in the world was that a point of? Well, we know that we live in a, we live in a country that we have a constitution. We have all this important stuff. For those of you who haven't read the constitution lately, or uh, apparently there are a lot of people in Washington who have not ever read it. But I digress. But we have this thing called separation of church and state, okay? And over the years, that has taken on, it's become, it's, it means something, it's purported to mean something totally different than what it was probably in, originally intended to do. So Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. And many people say, well, separation of church and state means that you got the church over here, and it can never touch the, the government, and the government can never touch the church. And so Christians should stay out of politics. Well, that's not what that means at all. What it means is there should never be a church established by the government because the colonists were coming from what? A country where the king, the head of the political regime, also happened to be the head of the church. And so you can see how that might kind of cause a little bit of problems. And they said, no, we don't want to do that. We want to be able to celebrate and, and worship however we want to do. So what that translates for us, though, today is that whether you're, whether you're selling hamburgers, whether you're a politician, whether you're a, a pastor, whether whatever you do for a living, who you are in Jesus Christ goes with you and, and helps you make every decision that you make. You cannot separate the decisions you make from who you are as a person, who your core is. And our core as Christians is, is to, to be a representative of Christ. So now that, I know it's like you can't legislate morality and people have tried to do that and that gets, that gets a, to be a problem and all that. But I just want to re remind all of us that while I'm a huge patriot, just like you are, my core is based on who I am in Christ. And who I am in Christ is the same as somebody who grew, grew up in a communistic country. Who they are in Christ is their core. Uh, somebody who grows, grows up in a socialist country, who they are in Christ is their core. Somebody who grows up in total anarchy, who they are in Christ is their core. And that will affect everything that we do. Every decision we make, every stand we take, it, it, it will affect all of those things. But it's cool because we all have, we live in a country that's made up of some very diverse people. And isn't that a good thing? Aren't you glad that there isn't just one color in the rainbow? Aren't you glad there isn't just one color of person? There's not just one sex of person. There's not just one um, political party. of one. It's, it's what makes it beautiful. We're like this really nice uh, tapestry, uh, if you will. And uh, I wanted to show you uh, one other thing that's pretty cool. Um, we have a video. Many of you are going to remember this. Bill, are you ready? Bill is back there on video duty back there. Some of you will remember this and enjoy it. I'm gonna have a three ring circus someday. People will say it's a fine one, son. Gonna have a three ring circus someday. People will come from miles around. Lions, tigers, acrobats, and jugglers, and clowns. Galore, tightrope walkers, pony riders, elephants, and so much more. Guess I got the 
the idea right here at school. Felt like a fool when they called my name. Talking about the government and how it's arranged. Divided in three like a circus. Ring one, executive. Two is legislative, that's Congress. Ring three, judiciary. Right up and visit ring number one The show's just begun, meet the president I am here to see that the laws get done The ringmaster of the government On with the show! Hurry, hurry, hurry to ring number two See what they do in the Congress Pass the laws and juggling bills Oh, it's quite a thrill in the Congress Focus your attention on ring number three The judiciary's in the spotlight The courts take the laws and they tame the crimes Balancing the wrongs with your rights No one part can be more powerful than any other is Each controls the other, you see And that's what we call checks and says, well, everybody's act is part of the show, and no one's job is more important. The audience is kind of like the country, you know, keeping an eye on their performance. Ring one, executive, two is legislative, that's Congress. Ring three, judiciary, see, it's kind of like my circus, my circus. It's a fine one, son. But until I get it, I'll do my thing. With government, it's got three rings. How many of y'all remember that? Ah, there you go. Yeah. I, some of you are like, I've never seen that before. Isn't it amazing that even then they knew it was going to be a three-ring circus in Washington, I think? No. Why did I want to show that to you? Because it's important as we pray today, because I, I really want us to pray specifically for those three, uh, those three branches of our, of our government. Uh, we want to pray for our president and the executive office and, and all the people who are there and influencing the influencers. We want to pray for our Congress. Uh, we want to pray for those senators and congressmen who are there to represent you and I. And we want to pray that God would, that they would be open to the voice of God, that they for those who are there and are Christian, that again, their core would come out and would be represented in the way that they represent us as Christians. And then in our judicial, that they would, they would just do their, that everybody would do their jobs and only their jobs, but that they would do their jobs for those who are Christians, that they would let, they would let that core of their Christianity be what drives them. And so uh, I, I just want to do that and, and kind of talk about that. So um, that's, we're going to do that in just a minute. So um, in Second Chronicles seven fourteen, and we know this, we've heard this over and over again. If my people who are called by not my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. I think it's really interesting that there are a lot of us uh, who know people and we ourselves pray for our government, but we forget that um, we're also supposed to humble ourselves. See, you humble before you pray. Because if we pray from the wrong attitude, from the wrong altitude, from the wrong perspective, the prayers are not going to be very effective. But when we humble ourselves and we first look at ourselves and we, and we submit to the authority un, that we're under, whether that's um, our governmental authority, it's especially our spiritual, our, our, our authority from God, um, it gets us in the right frame of mind then to begin to pray the way God would have us to pray. There have been people in history who church, the church has said, that's the Antichrist. And so they basically prayed against that person.